So you want to do a case swap on your MR2 Spider, and you're worried how is it going to fit into the MR2, at least from a physical perspective, or do you maybe have a RRC manifold or something like that, and you're wondering if it's going to hit the firewall when installing everything? Well, guess what? You're in the right place because this video is going to answer all these questions. So without further ado, join me and let's dive right into it. Welcome back to a new episode of Jesse Spec. Today is a super important one because after all this hard work of putting the engine and refreshing it, we're gonna finally be able to put it into the MR2 Spider that you see just behind there. And that's today's goal. So first of all, before we did that, I had to quickly fabricate a little block off cap, as you can see here on the RRC intake manifold. That is something that I couldn't do in the last video, so make sure to do that, otherwise your car will have lots of trouble and suck air in through there. Recently, I got a new forklift, so I decided using it just to make things a bit easier and less of a hassle to lift the engine off the engine, or should I say motor stand, taking it off here, playing around a little bit as well. So as you can see, this is pretty practical. And then we're gonna put it on some little crates so we can just slip it into the car after. Okay guys, the engine is here on a little crate, ready to get slipped into the MR2's butt. But before that, I need to show you a few more parts. We have, again, Big, big shout out to OS Geeken for being on board with us today. They've helped us with the 2ZZ swap for LSDs and clutches. And this time we're going beast mode again with a racing clutch by OS Geeken for the K20. But this time it's going to be a twin clutch. What's special about this clutch though is it has a steel cover, however, it's a twin disc and as you can see the diameter compa in comparison to the flywheel is really small. So that means that the inertia is going to be very low. So very high response accelerator pedal and there might be of course some little bit idling issues and little things like that. If you don't pass your gears very quickly, you might actually have the revs that dropped back down. But in any case, I'm super thankful to OS Geeken for supporting us. I'm looking forward as well to the LSD. I'm gonna be using an OS Geeken LSD again, but it didn't come in yet because of supply shortages. So in any case, that will not prevent me from installing the clutch and also uh, putting the, the transmission back on so I can actually install this awesome clutch kit and also get the car driving basically, and the LSD will be coming later. So this is my clutch. Of course, always Geeken clutches always come with the release bearing included, always with lots of documents and everything. The only thing that it's not included are the flywheel bolts. So I bought original Honda ones again. So this is all I need in order to install my clutch. So I'll be doing that really shortly. Now that I think of it, how about we take a little look inside and see how this clutch is built. So you can see this is really a very, very nice clutch kit. Very lightweight as well. Once again, the important thing with this build is it's a race car, okay? 
So as you can see, we have the first disc that comes here. Then we have the intermediary plate in the middle. The second disc. And the plate on top here and this cover coming on top. So, and as I said, since the diameter is so small, this is the stock flywheel, as you can see. The mass is totally different. This is way, way lighter. Stock clutch as well is here. Look at the difference in size. Totally different. If we put them on top, there's like a, at least a centimeter on each side of difference. So see this came like this. So you can see, totally different, right? Always geek in, stock clutch. This is gonna go, as our friends at Mighty Car Mods would say, in the bin, right? So this is gonna go in the bin, as I said, and I'm really looking forward to installing this. So once again, many thanks to OSG Ken. I'm looking forward to getting the LSD as well. I've tested those products already extensively on the 2ZZ platform and I love them. So once you go OSG Ken, you're never gonna go back with anything else because honestly, the quality is absolutely unbelievable. So let's put all this aside because now what's gonna happen is I'm removing all these parts because the next step will be to install, install the flywheel onto the engine here, then put the clutch on as well, torque everything to spec, put the transmission on, and then start mocking up the swap brackets so we can slide everything into the car. So let's get started. Now the engine is back in the air, I can install my flywheel. I usually like to put one bolt just to hold everything in place until I get the other bolts. And then I like to use with very the lowest torque setting possible an impact wrench just to make sure all the bolts are evenly tightened onto the flywheel. Then from there we're gonna tighten the flywheel to spec. It's 125 newton meters roughly or 90 foot pounds of torque. And that's how much you have to tighten it. Make sure to do it in the order as given from the factory. It's usually in a star pattern. And then I always like to check one more time. And what I also do is, as you can see, I'm using a pen just to mark all the bolts that were tightened and make sure this is actually an awesome technique to see if anything comes loose in the case of something breaking. From there, I installed the two discs centered them as good as possible and then I start tightening the pressure plate. It's really important, you will see later why, that the discs are perfectly centered with a guide otherwise you're gonna get into trouble and it's actually gonna happen after so you're gonna see what happens if you don't do it correctly. And same here, I tighten all the bolts to spec, I use my little pen to make sure that if something comes loose I would see it and like that, at least, it's easy for troubleshooting if anything would ever go wrong. But if you tighten things to spec, usually things do not come loose. So this engine is dangling up in the air and it's ready to get its transmission. So let's do that now. So here you see, we're getting really close to putting everything into the car. I just replaced the release bearing that was given from OS Geeken. I put some copper grease just to make sure everything's nice and lubed up and from there now we're gonna install the transmission onto the flywheel. Everything seems to be going fine until I realize oh the transmission is not going in perfectly well. I seem to be able to get into the first disc but the second disc it was honestly nearly impossible to get it aligned perfectly just by eye if you see what I mean. So finally, I ended up going to a neighboring garage and got one of these centering tools because honestly, with a twin disc, take my word for it, hours of trying, it did not work out. So just get the plastic tool as you can see here right away and it will save you a lot of time and get it in perfectly. So as you can see here, I ended up being able to install the transmission, put the starter motor as well in and finally, 
things are looking good, I'll be able to put the whole engine and transmission into the car. In order to do that, you can see I still have the crash bar on the car. So I quickly removed it. And as you can see, wow, a lot of space has freed up and I'll be able to roll the engine and transmission with these little carts just below the frame here and it will go in pretty easily. But before we do that, let's check all the mounting points and install already the swap brackets to make sure that everything is mounted and ready to go in at the moment everything's in the engine bay basically. So this is the first bracket. This is the second one, so on the transmission as well next to the exhaust. I like leaving a little bit of play in all the brackets so I can actually wiggle it in a bit easier. Here you can see this pretty fancy looking bracket that you replace the stock one with and put this instead. So this will basically also bolt onto the transmission and onto the motor. Here you see the stock one that I removed previously. And now the next thing I installed is the clutch slave cylinder and the fancy braided hose kit that actually allows you to bolt in directly into the MR2 hydraulic system and use the K series clutch system. Here you see the other mounting point on the firewall that will go onto the gray bracket I showed you previously. And this is the other motor mount using the stock MR2 and this adapter plate basically. And here you see one more transmission mount here is going to be reused with the black one we installed right here. This was the stock one, so it cannot be used. So basically see here, you remove the stock one, put that black bracket instead on the transmission and that will bolt into the MR2 rubber bushings. And on the other side, this is what it looks like. And that bracket will bolt into these two bolts here. So now let's get the engine into place here. I really like the carts. It really allows you to slide everything into place and makes life actually pretty easy. And it shows that you do not absolutely need a hoist to do this kind of swap and just a jack stand, lifting up the body, removing the crash bar and a couple of carts. And this shows you that you can already basically slide the engine into place. And now let's do a visual check and see what the objective is. So as you can see here, we want to make these two parts up. And on this side, we want to insert those screws into that bracket. And we have one more mount in the back there. But as you can see, there might be some problems with the RRC manifold. In any case, I'm going to try doing it like this. I decided to quickly remove the hood just to gain a little bit of extra space on top because I'm going to be using my forklift. You can, of course, use an engine crane that works perfectly as well. But I decided to use the tools that I had nearby. So, yeah. So as you can see here, you can lift up the engine like that. And here I had to just readjust because it wasn't pulling it up straight how I wanted to. It's a bit of a fiddling experience here. But once you get it into place, you can really pull the engine up. And sorry, I skipped ahead a little bit here. But as you can see, the engine is in. And actually, surprisingly, it wasn't the RRC that was the main blocking point. It was actually the alternator. So I had to bash the uh, firewall, as you can see here, especially near the throttle body and near the alternator. So those were places actually where I wasn't expecting to have clearance issues. The, manifold in itself wasn't actually such a big deal. Victory, as you can see, the engine is holding in with its own brackets in the car. And I am so relieved because that is really like, let's say the crucial part of getting the engine physically in. Of course, there are all kinds of steps that are still coming ahead here. You can see in the back that I had to bash a little bit the firewall. I didn't actually have to do it that much near the RRC manifold. It was really at the alternator where I wasn't expecting it, but there was significantly less place than I thought. But as you can see, everything is bolted into place. The brackets are actually fitting pretty well. Shout out to MAP 
for doing that. And I still have this one bracket that I'm going to put on the subframe that I didn't install yet because I still have to weld a bung on my exhaust. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can see, it is a pretty easy fit. However, if anybody is worried if it actually fits in the car, you definitely have to bash the firewall a little bit. I'd say maybe one centimeter in total in some areas. And, but otherwise, it really fits in well. Shout out to MAP for their brackets and mounts. They actually fit really well. And maybe one last advice, make sure not to tighten everything too strongly, uh, especially on the brackets and everything. So when you install it, you can move things into place in an easier manner than if everything's tightened up. I also wanted to quickly introduce you to the new mascot. His name is Spike. For those who are wondering, it's a Staffy, so Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And he's going to be hanging around in some of the videos you've actually maybe heard him running around sometimes in the videos. So if you like Staffies as well, make sure to tell me in the comments below. I really love these dogs. They are awesome. And anyway, this is not car related, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Okay, shall we go?